All right, so the action potential starts by moving down the axon, which opens up channels along the axon, releasing calcium down the axon and into the synapse. Once in the synapse, the calcium causes the synaptic vesicles to fuse with the synapse. Once the fusion occurs, there is a release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. Once that acetylcholine is in the synaptic cleft, it binds to receptors located on the motor end plate. Those receptors are then opened and sodium floods inside the cell. This causes the charge on the inside of the cell to become more positive than the outside of the cell. And this is depolarization and the action potential occurs. The action potential moves along the sarcoma and down the T-tubule. Once it moves down the T-tubule, it releases calcium from the terminal cisterni of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The calcium attaches to a troponin molecule located on the tropomyosin. This causes the active sites of the actin molecules to be exposed. Once the active sites are exposed, ATP comes in and moves the head of the myosin from low energy to high energy. Those heads bind to the active site, creating a cross bridge from the myosin to the actin. And the power stroke occurs, so a sliding of the thin filament over the thick filament. And that is the muscle contraction that takes place. At this point, in order to release the contraction, acetylcholine esterase binds to the acetylcholine that was bound to the receptors on the motor end plate, breaking up acetylcholine into acetic acid and choline and moving it back into the synaptic vesicles. This ends the nerve impulse and the calcequestrin, these little clear beads located in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, uses ATP energy to pull the calcium from the troponin back into the terminal cisterni. ATP releases the myosin head from high energy back to low energy, and the active sites on the actin are covered back up and relaxation occurs.